We're going to be working with Indian clubs and Kali martial arts sticks or screaming sticks or any sticks. These are some of the best self-defense tools for beginners that you can learn. Sticks, because sticks are everywhere and they're just one of the most basic original martial arts self-defense tools you've ever seen. It may go back, you know, thousands of years in time. There are sticks everywhere. Caveman picks up a stick, saber tooth tiger. They're just keeping them back. Clubs, also ancient self-defense tool. So the best self-defense tool for beginners, and this is the best self-defense tools for women because they're four small players. It takes what you have naturally, your strength, your speed, your power, and it multiplies it when you use the basic principles of self-defense. So you're going to be using Indian club swinging to get stronger, faster, more powerful strength in your arms, shoulders, hands, but also learning how to use a basic club for self-defense. And I know it seems like oversimplification, but it's not because you can find sticks, you can find clubs just about anywhere. So if you're interested in senior self-defense, self-defense against a bigger opponent, multiple opponents, someone with a knife, how to defend in the street fight self-defense, sticks and clubs are a, a brilliant way to train, basic way to go. You need to learn how to defend yourself. Best self-defense tools for beginners, sticks and clubs. You're gonna start with your clubs first. Now, these are called Indian swing clubs or Indian clubs. They're also an ancient tool that has been around for years. And maybe, you know, the king of a province in India would carry around or the prince, go out and collect their, their tribute or their taxes. And if you didn't pay them, you know, basic, simple, you got a club. So you're gonna start with the clubs. You're gonna use these to warm up your shoulders in your arms. And now if you don't have a pair of these, you can do exactly everything that I do. I'm gonna lower the camera just a little. But you can do everything that I'm doing now with a pair of collie sticks. So you're gonna hold, if you do have these clubs, hold this finger kind of cuts over the bottom. We're gonna start with the clubs. We're gonna go back and forth between striking motions, defensive motions, thrusting motions, jabbing motions, and strengthening your arms and your shoulders. If you're looking for effective self-defense, and you feel like you might not be as strong as your opponent, maybe you're a senior, you're looking for senior self-defense, or you're a woman and you think you need to have something to give you the advantage against a stronger opponent. So one of the best tools for women, clubs and sticks, or you just wanna be a better martial artist, you wanna be more, more well-rounded, have more tools to use for self-defense. Indian club swinging and Kali martial arts sticks also known as Eskrima, Arnis, basic Filipino martial arts fighting sticks. Can't go wrong. Best weapons to learn. This stretching, you can see that when I start, my elbow's kind of bent, and that makes it easier, less leverage on the joint. And as you warm up, you're gonna start to extend the arms more, opening the chest more, getting more of a stretch in your upper chest, in your shoulders, in your upper back, in your neck, you're gonna feel so good, so much healthier, so much stronger with Indian club swinging. Again, you're holding here. You're not gonna squeeze so much that your skin changes color, but you're gonna keep your hand closed, firm and relaxed. Martial arts is all about speed. You're never gonna squeeze your muscles to the point where it slows you down. So you're gonna be relaxed and firm, never rigid. You're going back, and fourth, and then split it. Splitting it this way is going to increase your range of motion, meaning that you're gonna stretch more. You're gonna get a better workout. The blood is gonna to start to pump through your body. Your core muscles are engaged. You can also do these sitting in a chair, by the way. But see how my hands aren't out here? I'm trying to keep them more in the center of my body. Keep your hands closer to your center line. When you fight today, whether you're fighting with that club or fighting with the collie stick, all of these fighting motions are gonna be in front of your body, especially if they have a knife. If they have a knife, you're not gonna let them through. You're splitting that motion a little deeper, a little longer, and then you're gonna go back to that first motion because I wanna to continue to have you get your heart rate up, bend your knees, start to build strength in your legs, because all fighting requires strong foundation 
And in this case, on your feet, you're gonna strike, even if it's with a stick, with a club, it's all coming off of the floor first. So bending here, build some power in the legs, but it's also going to really, in a very explosive way, I need a little bit more room. It's gonna get your heart rate up and it's gonna to start to make you sweat. You're gonna lean out faster and become fighting fit. So you're back here. There we go, I wanna show you. Just simply bend your knees, pushing your bum back, right? This comes up, your hips go back. Just going to the back. You're gonna do each one of these for 30 seconds. Now I'm gonna put these down. We're gonna pick them up again. We're gonna go into the sticks. If you don't have clubs yet, I put a link below if you wanna see what a, a good set of clubs cost. They're super inexpensive. It's a great training tool. It's a good self-defense tool. The link's below, but if you don't have those, start with collie sticks, the screaming sticks. If you don't have these, start with a broomstick or a mop stick, cut it in half. You'll see that the appropriate length is about from my armpit to my finger tip. It's about that long. Now, how many inches, how many uh, centimeters? Don't worry about it. Just get it's about 28 inches, 24, 28, but get something close. If it's a little longer, that's okay. If it's a little shorter, that's okay. Don't wait to start until you have the perfect length. So get a pair. And remember, you can do those same warm-up moves here. You can split them. You can do those little squats, pushing your hips back. Now, with the right stick in the right hand, left stick in the left hand, put them on that shoulder. So right hand, right shoulder, left hand, left shoulder. There's no right and left stick. That was a mistake that I just made. Guess what? I'm gonna make a, mis a lot of mistakes. You're gonna make a lot of mistakes. Neither one of us is gonna quit because we make a mistake. Don't let the mistake be the reason you stop. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Get your elbows in, and on the right side, I want you to slice through and down to your hip and bring it up to your other shoulder and then slice through down to the hip in the same shoulder. So one, two, nice and easy, slow as smooth, smooth as fast. You wanna reach out, keep the fight as far away from you as possible. If you have it out here, good, that's perfect. That's what I use. My Joe is also a 50 inch red wood oak, a red oak. Joe, I have the same, you and I have the same one. But you're coming here and here, just over and over. Thank you, my pleasure. You guys keep me going. So when you log on here and you either chat with me while we're live or you leave me comments, that keeps me going. That's with the right hand. The idea is just good. Uh, we're gonna do, Tom, let's do Tompa sometime this week. Uh, just this, you want this X motion, right? You want to come here and here. And that's with the right hand. I said this at the beginning. You're going to learn to fight behind your sticks. Meaning, don't be wide here and wide here. That's too wide. That's too easy to stop. They'll just jam in and they'll stop your hand. You won't be able to strike. You want to bring this from here into them and through. Striking through. Striking through. Now, if you have a target, this is a um, Muay Thai bag or a banana bag. It has the lower portion, so you can work leg kicks, elbows, knees, drive your knees. You can also work sticks on it, works really well with sticks. So from here, sliding through, back up, sliding back the other way. One, two. Now if you don't have a bag to strike, you can use tires. Tires are a great option because they make it bounce back and that's gonna build strength in your strike because that bounce back, that energy return, creates uh, resistance. Kind of like lifting weights. You're gonna get strong fast when you use a stack of tires. Or if you don't have anything to strike, just practice faster, faster and faster in the air. That's the right hand. Now with the left hand, put the left foot forward, go slow first, look at your motion, come forward, forward, and through, make sure it's not wide and down. See, I'm going wide, I'm not even hitting anything. I wanna go through my target, fight from behind your sticks. Once you get warmed up, faster and faster. One, two, one, two. Always practice for self-defense. 
putting power into every strike during the practice. Maybe the first five or six, light and easy. And then the next, the middle ones, fast. And then the last one's all out, as hard as you can. You really wanna be able to put a lot of pressure in your grip so that as that goes through, it almost wants to come out of your hand, but you don't let it. That's gonna build strength in your hand. Now, those are the first two strikes. We're gonna call that angle one and angle two. Angle one and angle two with the left hand. Put these to the side, we're going back to the Indian swinging clubs. You'll see this is called Indian club swinging, the Gurkha. Those are the soldiers, the amazing fighters from India, um, from the regions of like near, near the, Nepal and, and India, that, that area. And they do that Gakta martial arts. They go into the army, uh, in, in the, the British army, and they have a whole regiment just of those tough as nails fighters. And they bring in this kind of, they brought this training to the West. This comes from India. And we swing the club. Again, you're holding here. And you want to be tough and strong like those Gurkha soldiers. Get a pair of Indian clubs, some swinging clubs. And like I said before, it's not just an exercise tool. Originally, it's, yeah, and that'll, that'll crack your skull open. There's no question. That's a deadly, deadly weapon. For self-defense, you would do the same basic strikes we just did with our Indi or our Kali martial arts sticks. So let's do that. Put them on your shoulders, put the right foot forward, and go nice and slow. Two, one, two, one, two. Now you're not gonna be able to go as fast. These weigh two and a half pounds. You can get a set below. If you look at the link below, they come in two sets. One, in, uh, I think it's one pound and two pounds. Don't go any heavier than that. I have, well, I'll grab them in a minute. I have a pair of five pound and a pair of 10 pound. That's 20 pounds altogether. And it seems like, well, that's not that much weight. Five pounds isn't that much weight. Two pounds is a lot when you've never done it. Sticks are a best option to start. Go from sticks and then work up to one pound when you get the motion down. Make sure it's in your center line, right? You're going through the middle. And then from here to here, one, two, one, Two, it's gonna put more pressure, more stress on your grip, making you stronger and less likely when you go to your Kali sticks or your Arnis or your Escrima, or maybe for self-defense you fight with a knife or machete. Doing this motion with this, it's not coming out of your hand. Your grip is gonna become like a vice grip. It's gonna become like iron, stronger than iron. Not literally, but you know what I mean. You're gonna have a really strong grip. Now let's go back to an exercise to build core strength, strengthen the shoulders, strengthen the arm, strengthen the hand especially. And we're gonna start with it here beside our body. We're gonna go back like we started here. But when we go down, I'm gonna add a little turn, a little turn. Now this is your right hand. On your right hand, you're gonna drop it. So yeah, we'll do the cane too. And then go to the front. Drop, this will make you a better cane fighter, for sure. Down, cane self-defense, cane martial arts is a great option for seniors, for wounded warriors. One of the best self-defense tools for women is the cane, but good, I'm so glad you're working out. I'm proud of you. Ben, keep it going. OG, Ben Tahoe, is that an OG Tahoe truck? Are you out there at Lake Tahoe? Either way, that's super cool, right? I love the Tahoes and I love Lake Tahoe in the summer and the winter. So you drop it, goes around, goes around. You just keep it going and good. Yeah, take your time. There's plenty of time. Time passes if you do nothing. Time passes if you do a little bit at a time. So you might as well do something because it's gonna, oh, okay. <laughs> Man, was I way off on that. From here, you drop it, you go forward. It is a beautiful area. It's probably, you know, maybe it grows out there. I don't know. So from here to here, some of you guys are like laughing. You knew that. I didn't know that. All right. So from here to here, just going forward, you're going to marry that move going down, and then you're going to do the opposite going up. The goal is to get flexibility and strength. Flexibility is not enough. It's like when you kick. In kicking martial arts, you'll see these people, they come in, 
Uh, they have great, incredible flexibility. Maybe they stretch. They got one of those stretching things. To get their, but they have no tightness, no t uh, strength in the legs. So good. The, the, um, you know, if there's no strength in your flexibility and your leg goes really high, you hit them and there's no power there. You fall down, they don't. You want them to fall down for self-defense. Same thing's true with your grip. If you have a super flexible wrist but no strength and you lose your weapon all the time or your hand just buckles, that's not good for self-defense. You want to have strength and flexibility. So we go forward here, backward here. You put the forward motion down and you pull the backward motion up. So you go down and up. And because I want you to get super lean, I want you to continue to improve your overall health and fitness to live a higher quality of life as you age, right? We want to stay flexible, mobile, strong, and have great endurance. So you're going to drop it with a squat. Come back up. Go down with that squat. Let the Indian clubs at two pounds in each hand pull you back up. So you're going down and you're going up. Down and up. Down and up. Put those to the side. I like to do this where we do some strengthening, some stretching, some exercise, and then go back to the sticks to learn some self-defense uh, techniques. That's a smart way to do it, Ben. He said he likes to fill a backpack or a rucksack and then go out and do some training. That really gets the heart rate up, doesn't it? So I'm gonna go back to here. Now I wanted to show you this because I forgot to last time. You have a little bit of the stick coming here on the bottom. And the purpose of that with the Kali martial arts stick or the Eskrima martial arts stick, there's a new uh, Disney movie coming out of cartoon with for kitties or whatever, but it's called Raya and Raya Raya and the Dragon, the Last Dragon. And she uses Kali martial arts fighting sticks. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I want my kids to see that, right? I want them to see that you can defend yourself. One of the best self-defense tools for women, especially here's the movie, prove it, uh, Kali martial arts sticks. But you have a little bit coming out the bottom. And this is, let's say this is my threat. He's coming up on me fast. I now have this ability to go straight into the face. Nose, mouth, throat for self-defense, right into the body, down into the groin. I can then smash with the other side, but that can come in pretty quick. You can put this, oh yeah, uh, he said, Ben said he puts his uh, heavy 20 pounds on each side in a rucksack or backpack on his bow staff, and then you can squat with it. You can probably do it back of the chest, in front of the chest. I like to do front squats like this. It's really good for your legs. Back to here, we're on this. We have these striking surfaces. Make sure you've got this in there. Put them back on the shoulders, right foot forward. Start on the right side. Do your first X down and then turn your palm up and bring it up the other way. This slicing motion, and again, fighting behind your sticks, keep it in front of your body. Slice it up and slice it up the other way. So down X, up X. Angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four. Then switch your feet. One, two, three, four. When I come up, I turn the palm up. When I come up on the other side, palm down. Switch your feet. So you're going to do four strikes and switch. I've got to switch. Four, one, two, three, four. Remember when I said I'm going to make lots of mistakes? And you will too. And neither one of us is going to let the mistakes stop us from moving forward, right? I meant what I said. You and I are going to always make a lot of mistakes. Don't ever let a mistake be the reason that you slow down or quit. Let the mistake be the reason that you keep going. When you have a lot of challenge on something like this, this is challenging, by the way, you grow the fastest, you grow the most. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you have your target, down, down, up, up. Switch sides, down, down, up, up. Practice it. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, but at some point you must start to speed up. Two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, two. And you can hear what's happening is all of your natural strength is getting transferred into this stick. This is actually rattan. I put a link below the martial arts store. I think it's the second link. You can see what your options are with this. They make some in rattan, some in, um, rattan is a, is a weed, uh, not a weed, it's a grass, but it's extremely hard, it's lightweight, it's extremely flexible, 
and it's durable. They're, and they're so inexpensive. It's a great way to start. But you can get it metal. I've got metal ones. You can get it in a hardwood. As long as you get a pair. And like I said, invest your time before you invest your money. Grab a broomstick. Cut the broom off. Cut it in half. You've got your Kali martial arts fighting sticks. Let's go back to our Indian swinging clubs. And I want you to go into your split motion. And this time I want you to take a little step and a drop. When you step, both knees bend just a little bit. It's not quite a lunge. I think I need a little bit more room here, guys. You know, I've never said guys before. What does that even mean? It's just me and you. We're just working out together. From here, everybody else says that, and I watch those videos, and I say, who are you talking to? It's just me watching you. Step in and drop. Step in and drop. Step in. Step in. This stepping is going to start to help with your coordination. It's going to help build strength in your knees, stabilize your hips, make you fighting fit, lean your body out, help you to have a higher quality of life. And I truly honestly mean that. If you can move around, you have better mobility, better flexibility, better strength, better endurance, you'll have a higher quality of life. Every age, young or old, man, woman, wounded, not wounded, able to otherly able, whatever it is. All right, now go back to here. Starting with the right one on your shoulder. Make that turn and then go out. Turn and come back. Turn and go out. Turn and come back. So you're going forward and back. Forward and back. This is the other hand. Isolate that hand. Do that one a few times. One, two, one. Then do them both together. One, two. This is brain training too, by the way. This will make you smarter, better at all other activities, especially martial arts. One, two. Then do one hand and then the other hand. Now you're alternating. Bring through one, bring through two. Amen. Just being able to get off the couch. That changes your life right there. One, two. Talk about improvement, quality of life. Then watch. Got one out. I'm going to bring it out and back. I want to tell you this. This is very important to me to tell you. This one took me a long time. I'm talking like two or three weeks of doing it again and again and again. Staying frustrated. Get frustrated and stay frustrated and work through it. Don't let frustration make you quit. Don't let frustration let you quit. Don't let that be an excuse. Some things are supposed to be frustrating. Some things are supposed to be hard. That's, you're right. That's where your confidence comes from. You build comf confidence when you do the hard things. So you're going to alternate. And then some of you are going to get this right away. And you'll say, I don't even know what he's talking about. That was easy. But something else will be hard for you because there's always something that's easy and always something that's hard. And it's never the same for two people. One, two, one, two. But this is going to be so good for your coordination, flexibility, strength, speed, power, balance. You want to learn how to defend yourself better open hand or with a weapon in your hand, it's a great drill. And because you're doing it with your Indian swinging clubs, you can see it's really starting to make that strong. Why? Why do you wish that? Don't wish it were easier, wish you were stronger. And, and I'm, I'm assuming that's mostly a, a serious comment. And if you're, uh, you're probably there at night, everybody else is asleep anyway, right? You know, who cares what anybody else thinks? At least they're leaving you alone. He said he was working out with his, uh, his bow staff at the truck stops. Uh, they're going to leave you alone. So you can do this with your Kali martial arts sticks too. It's a great drill. You can do that down and up drill. You can do the same time down, same time up drill, same time out, same time back drill. Or you can, I don't know what that, that was. I think I was just trying to make something up. I'm going backward now. There we go. But just practice. Try it. Do it. Get out of your comfort zone. We, want, we have four strikes, four angle strikes. Now we have 
the horizontal strikes. So we have one, two, first two angles, three, four. Bring it through and back. When you bring it through, your palm is facing the sky. When you bring it back, your palm is facing down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I want you to finish with seven today. I like to start with seven. A lot of schools start with more than that. But I like to think of like you pick up a stick, any stick, doesn't matter where it is. Uh, this is why it's one of the best self-defense tools for women, best self-defense tools for seniors, best self-defense tools other than a gun for anybody is because sticks are everywhere. You can find sticks walking down the street, in the park, you know, tree branch, um, a mop stick, a mop broom or a broomstick. Those are the obvious ones. A long spatula in the kitchen. We were at dinner the other night and I always play this game. I do this sometimes with my kids when it's just us or I do it by myself in my head. I look around, I sit down, always sit with your back to the door, or not to the door, <laughs> sit down so you're facing the door, your back to the wall so you can see who's coming and going, right? Know where all your exits are. That's basic self-defense, situational awareness. But then I look around and I think, okay, what tools in here, if someone comes in and they have this weapon or that weapon? Now, if it's, if it's a, you know, a shooting weapon, then what, what are we gonna get behind what's covering concealment, right? What can either hide where we are or hide where we are and stop a bullet? How can we get behind something to get to the door? Which door are we going out? If they come in that door, are we going out this door? Can we go through the kitchen, get out the back? So you, so you situation awareness, you pay attention to that. It's basic self-defense. This is great self-defense for anybody. But then I start thinking, if it's somebody with a knife, if it's somebody with a weapon other than a gun, or if I have to have something and they get distracted and they're reloading or something what can i have that multiplies my force i can go hand to hand i know how to do that really well but if i can go stick to head that's even better because now i have reach advantage and i have a force multiplier i can bring this in and make a lot more for self-defense in the fight a lot faster so do that make that a practice see where you are and that's why i like you to learn how to fight with a stick because and that's why I don't want you to get too hung up on, you know, this school of Kali or that school of Salat or that school of Eskrima. Yes, do that. Make that your personal interest. That's right. That's good. Join one of those schools. Learn all their history and the, um, you know, the diaspora of the Majapahit, the community that behind Indonesia and Philippines. Learn all that stuff, right? Learn all the backstory. But also learn how to practically pick up a stick and this is something I teach all the time, a lot of people don't anymore, throwing weapons, right? I start with a tennis ball. There's a dot, you can see it there on the wall. I put that dot on the wall when I moved into this building because every day, 25 times I throw right hand, 25 times you throw left hand. You throw right and left. All of your accuracy becomes better with any weapon, any strikes. Even this accuracy improves throwing right hand, left hand. Oh, 25 times, 25 times. That's all it takes every single day, 25 times, right? It does something in your brain. It makes your focus a lot better. Your aim becomes a lot better. I, tennis ball. And then um, we use the, you know, for fun, the throwing stars. But that's the same, the same way you would throw a shuriken, a real uh, sharpened throwing star. We use the ones, the suction cups, right? With the little kitties. And you practice 25 times, right? 25 times left. From this distance, this distance, this distance, when you get far enough back, overhand throw. How do you overhand throw? And then you throw a knife. How do you throw a knife? How do you throw a sharpened spike? How do you take one of those wood or metal, nun, uh, not nunchucks, chopsticks, chuck, chuck, right, the chock, chopsticks, right? You take the metal chopsticks that you see at a nice restaurant, sharpen the, the points, right? You don't really have to sharpen that much anyway because they're heavy. And how do you throw those and make them hit your target and you improve your, you never know when you need a throwing. Uh, throwing weapon. Maybe you're stranded on a desert island or who knows, right? It'll probably never happen. But what if it does and you had some options and there's a bird and you can't catch him with the hand and you don't know how to make a snare, but you pick up a rock and your accuracy is in insanely incredible. And I know this guy, one of my uh, shooting instructors, one of the most accurately, insanely accurate guys with a rock. He, he can hit you with the right hand, the left hand from 25 yards and hit a moving target because he practices it, you should practice it. All right, back to this. We come down, down, up, up, across, and back, and then straight down the middle, right? Other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
down, one, two, three, four, five, six, down, one. Every time switching your feet, gradually down, increasing the speed of your strikes, putting some power behind every move. You need stopping power. Stop the bigger opponent. Stop the guy with the knife. Stop multiple attackers. You need to leverage what you have, and you need to do it in practice with speed, power, and intention. What's your intention? Stop the fight. Going back to Indian club swinging, the same exact thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, switch. One, two. Now, you're not going to get the same kind of speed here. You don't necessarily need it, or you don't need it at all. You don't need it because uh, this is just building your strength for the strikes when you have the stick in your hand. But it's also, if you have a club, <laughs> the club's going to do the work for you, right? That is two pounds. Most of it is right here. You, you can hear that's extremely hard. This is made out of some kind of polymer. But this will crack open. This will smash a coconut. We've done it. This will pop open, uh, you know, all the fruit. Goofy fruit tests. I haven't made any of those videos, but I used to do that to demonstrate to people. But you can smash easily, so you don't have to go fast. But I want you to go through a good range of motion. Three, build strength in your hands, in your joints. Plus, it's going to keep your heart rate up. It's going to allow you to start to lean your body out faster. But take your time with it. One, two, three. Learn how to fight with the club. It's one of the most original ancient weapons there ever was. We do. We did one last weekend, I think. I do both a lightsaber for fun, and we do, uh, we've been working with a Japanese boken, which is the base, you know, for the katana. You asked me if I worked. Yeah, same strikes as the king. All the stuff, it does. And um, it's about probably five or six different weapons all merged into one. That's how I like to roll. And uh, I'm not a traditionalist by any means. I'm not a rule follower by any means. That doesn't mean it's bad if you are. It's just, it's like 2021. Are you paying attention to what's happening? The world is both shrinking and turning itself all the way around and upside out and on top of its head. You've got to be super adaptable to what's coming and what's here now. And the only way to do that, if you get stuck in, oh, well, he's not wearing a white, you know, crossover uniform in his karate class. It's like all that stuff that was important even 20 years ago, if you're still stuck on that stuff, or there's only one style, you know, you can't learn this style until you learn that stuff. I'm just a firm believer that uh, it's like the whole Bruce Lee thing. The more I read about the Bruce Lee and, you know, be, be like water and, and uh, take what's useful. And yeah, I mean, he had something going on there. It was a really smart idea. Don't be stuck in one little box is what I'm saying. Get good at each thing. Get good at each thing. Be disciplined. Learn the, the basics and the important stuff. Yeah, and everyone learns differently, right? We know there are at least three learning styles. Uh, visual, you understand what you read and what you see. Auditory, you understand by stories, listening to stories. And then, like me, Kenneth, is that this in the third way, this all the ADH people, ADD people in the world are the third way, kinesthetic. Meaning that it's just the way you learn. It's not a disability. The schools have failed you. You didn't, if you had ADD, ADHD in school and you didn't do well, you didn't fail school. The school failed you because they should have been teaching you the way that they know you're supposed to learn, which is you have to experience it. You have to feel it. Johnny says he had an apple in the right hand and an apple in the left hand. And every other kid could look at the two apples in Adam or could hear the story about it in Adam. You have to have an apple in each hand, put them together and look at them. And then you know there's two. That's the way you learn. And that's not a disability, that's a learning style. But schools are only set up to teach visual learners and audit, especially here in the States and in Europe, visual and auditory learners. Kinesthetic learners, you get that in kindergarten. After that, you're on your own. Then they want to give you the Ritalin and the Sertera and all that other stuff and tell you there's something wrong with you. There's not, there's nothing wrong with you. If they said you had ADHD, that's a strength. Stop thinking that it's some kind of uh, weakness that you can't learn, or you have a difficult time learning. That just means you learn kinesthetically, which is actually a blessing. That means you're gonna get a lot of stuff done and you can't sit around. You gotta get up and move. That's good, that's healthy. That's how, that's how you're made. Back to this one. Now we did all of this fighting 
This is the Cinewally pattern. We're going to go into this. This is what we're going to finish with in a minute. But first, I want to show you how to use these to strengthen arms, shoulders, and make that rock-solid grip. Starting in the right hand, let the left hand just hold on to it. You're going to have the palms, these knuckles, facing the dirt, right, facing the ground. You're going to bring your thumb up so that your knuckles are facing the sky, almost like you're hitching a ride. From here, cuts down and in. One, two. This is your starting motion. One, see how my knuckles are facing down? My knuckles are facing the sky. Now, almost everybody I work with, when they bring it up, they bring it up like this. And the, the club is facing the sky. This is not it. This is it. Knuckles facing the sky. The knuckles facing the dirt, facing the sky. Dirt, sky. Then you're going to bring it more out. So your knuckles are facing right out. See how my palm is facing directly behind me? There's my palm. My palm is facing back. From here, in a nice fluid shielding motion. Think of a shield to protect yourself facing the ground, facing the side, and up. See that arc? From here to here. Just swing it in. Work on making this a flowing, fluid motion. That's your right hand. Then, left hand. I can't say this enough. These knuckles face the sky. This is what you're going to do. You're going to do this every time until you look at it and think about it and correct it. Change it. From here, out. One. And if you want to break it down to that smaller motion, knuckle straight down, knuckle straight up. Down, up. Bring it more out more. Two. You're going to do it 30 seconds on one arm. 30 seconds on the other arm. And then the second time you do it, when you bring it up, your elbow will open. And if you look from the side, this is in front, this is open. In front, open. It opens my chest all the way and puts the club behind your head. Now you might think to yourself, you're gonna hit yourself in the back of the head. I have never done it. And now probably about 20 years. I think I'm up to 20 years using these. Every single week, sometimes every single day, sometimes two or three times a day, not once have I hit myself in the back of the head. So it comes up, elbow, cast. Now think of casting a fishing pole. Cast means to throw. Throwing a knife, throwing an ax. That's a fun sport. Take that sport up next. From here, out, drop it or throw it, just don't let it go. So one, two, back to one, two, back to one. It's I say one, two, three, but it's really, it's two motions. It's this, it's the casting motion and the opening motion. Cast, open, cast, open. Then the other one. Now this is gonna to start to get blood to flow into your shoulder joints. Plasma is in the blood, full of oxygen, full of nutrients that will heal and open up, strengthen those muscles, giving you stronger shoulders. Stronger shoulders are always a good thing for self-defense. Your shoulders can never be strong enough in my opinion. The nice thing about using Indian club swinging is you're gonna get both circulation of that blood plasma, plasma and oxygen in there, which heals everything and strengthens it and builds the muscle, uh, helps out the, lubricates the joint so that the creakiness goes away, the pain goes away, and you're gonna do 30 seconds at a time. Now, if this is your beginning point, don't go past this. If you know how to do this already, then do one and follow it with the next one. I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating the move so you can see it, how when it comes up like this. And then, same time. And when you do same time, put the right hand in front, and then immediately after that, the left hand in front. You can see my right hand doesn't have a watch. My left hand does have a watch. 
but it's this opening the shoulders, really opens the chest, fires the muscles in the back, fires the muscles in the chest. You start to build strength, especially if you're one of these modern people like me, like the rest of us, who's like this too much. You start getting the pain here and the headaches. This will force you to bring your chin back. Because if you're like this, you can smack yourself. <laughs> your head's naturally gonna get out of the way. You don't even have to think about it. So this is gonna put you in the proper posture. The last step, and I'm gonna crank the camera down so you can see my feet and see what they're doing. Because this is also pretty important. This is gonna give you a much better workout. Is put your heels together and the balls of your feet out like a duck. And then suck your gut up and go through that range of motion. Same time and then alternating. And see how that's, that's turning me side to side. It's putting stress on my core on the midsection and that is going to give you, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. That's gonna give you a better workout. That's gonna get your heart rate up. That's gonna engage your core muscles. That's gonna improve your posture. Get your shoulders back and down, stomach up and in. Make you look taller because you will be taller because you won't be slouching and your head won't be down. So you'll be taller when you start to look around and see what's around you, your whole life changes. Because when you look down, you imagine all the worst things that will happen. When you look up, you see that the, the world is a mostly a beautiful place. Even if you live in a not so beautiful place, there's beauty everywhere, if you look for it. All right, now back to the collie sticks because I want to finish up with a Cinewale. And a Cinewale, Cinewale means weaving. So this is a weaving pattern. This is the cool thing. A lot of people want to learn this because it looks cool, but it's also good. It disguises repetition, uh, which means it allows you to get a lot more strikes in, but it also will, is good for your brain. Uh, good afternoon, Wilson. It's good to see you. So from here, I'm going to show you what I think is one of the easiest ways to get started with a, uh, the collie. I'm, I'm so glad you're here. Please don't apologize. Thank you. I always enjoy you being here. So from here, this, this, this is my right side. The right stick is going to go to my right shoulder. The left stick is going to go to my right ribs. Now, I want you to do this first. And it's only because I want to oversimplify something. Because I find that in this next pattern, there are three strikes per side. It's a six strike pattern. Almost everybody gets stuck with this and it's on the left side. I didn't because I'm left-handed. I got stuck on the right side, but you might get stuck on the right or the left. And you get this really good, but then you get over here and it gets all tangled up or something. Something like that happens. So I want you to do this and I want you to look at it and think right shoulder, right ribs. Left shoulder, left ribs. And then see if you can do it at the same time. And yes, I know this is oversimplification. I want it to be easy for you here. I hope your whole life there are some things that are really difficult and challenging for you because I know that's where you're going to grow the most. But for right now, I want this to be simple. And you're going to find the hard stuff as you go. So slow it down again, shoulder. What's gonna happen almost to everybody is that you're gonna get like this and you're gonna think you're here, but you're really here and it's not gonna work from here. See how my arm is crossed? You're gonna think it's on your shoulder and it is, but it's the wrong shoulder. It's gotta be on the same shoulder. So same shoulder, opposite ribs. Same shoulder, left hand, left shoulder, right hand, left ribs, opposite ribs. Then go to the starting point and strike that first strike and follow through to the other shoulder. We, we started here on the strikes. That's the first strike. Now the left hand is gonna be that backhand strike, which is the second angle, angle two, on the left hand. From here, we're starting over. One, two. And then you're gonna to have to leave this one out. And that's the hardest part here is leaving it out because you're going to come on that second angle and come to the opposite ribs. Remember I said it was three strikes per side. You just did three strikes. So from here, strike one, strike two, strike three, and under. 
And then you're in the exact same spot you were when we were doing this. So you're going to strike through. That's angle one. That's angle two with the opposite hand. That's angle two with the first hand. And then I'm here. One, two, three. Another way, because like you said, we all learn differently. Another way to learn it is to think of a V. V, that's the one side, that's the other side. V, V, it's kind of like a sideways V, like a less than sign or more than, depending on which side of the thing you're on. There's a V, V, V. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one more thing I'm gonna show you because this also helps some people learn, not everybody, from behind. So my right side, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then if you have a bag or the stack, the stack of tires, And there's, there's footwork that goes with it, but don't worry about the footwork from the start. <laughs> We're going to get there. You're going to get there. You're going you're gonna to be you're going to be ten times better than I am. But allow yourself some grace. Learn how to do just the hands, and then later, right foot, left foot. When the right, when number one comes from the right, right has to be forward and left. But don't worry about that from the start. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. And this is the basic pattern of Sinawali. And you can do this with your Kali martial arts fighting sticks or your Kali sticks. And then you can also do it with your Indian, Indian swinging clubs. Yes, always coming through the center. Good point. And again, my... Um, Stick fighting is very rudimentary, elementary. You can find, if you search for it, some amazing Kali or Eskrima or Arnis Masters. Uh, Taboda, what's his name? He's up in uh, North Carolina now, Master Taboda. One of the best I've ever seen, fastest, coolest, so many cool techniques. Dan Inasanto. Dan Inasanto, one of the best you'll find at Kali Martial Arts. And go learn the more intricate stuff, the more detailed patterns. The Sinawali patterns, they're, they're, they're an unlimited number. I just want you to learn how to, fight, to fight with fight with them and defend yourself in the most basic, basic way. Same thing with the club. The club, one last time, it, it's probably of all the weapons I have in, the, in this martial arts school, this one hits the hardest because it's a levered weight, meaning that the, the heaviness is here, the length is here, and it's one of the most basic self-defense tools from the beginning of all time. You know, the caveman picks up a club, boom, and self-defense. It's super simple, super basic. So learn your bait. Yeah, learn your basics in a wallet, and then you can learn it open hand. And you can learn it chopping. You can learn it punching. You can learn it with a knife. You can learn it with a knife in one hand and a stick in the other one. You can learn it with uh, nunchucks, double nunchucks. It's all the same thing. You can, you can learn how to start doing the sticky hand, you know, the, the hubad, hubad lubad, punching, that kind of stuff. There's no, there's no limit to the coolness that exists in this style, the, the Filipino martial arts. And I want you to start at the very beginning. And in, like I said before, I always say this, invest your time before you invest your money. Learn the basics here, and then if it's like, oh man, I really want to get deep into this, go find someone who teaches that exclusively and get as deep as you want to get into it. But don't wait to start. Don't wait till the perfect time, you have enough time, you have enough money, the wind is blowing the right way, the world has changed, the world's changing, we're just never going back. So learn it now, and learn it this way. This is the best way to learn. We learn from each other. And then when you can find somebody, get a training partner. Say, you know, hey, I'm not afraid of the COVID, you're not afraid, or we're both, immunized or what well, I don't know whatever it is thank you I appreciate that and then get somebody and and you know learn some learn some hubad lubad drills some you know give and take drills some punch and block drills learn some sticky hands from the Wing Chun in uh 
in uh, Jeet Kune Do and then go all in, right? Um, burn yourself out on martial arts. This is so funny because people say to me all the time, you know, do you ever get, or ask me, do you ever get burned out in martial arts? And I said, you know, I've been doing it since I'm nine. I've never once, never once been burned out in martial arts. I've got burned out in things, things that I might be doing, like where the stress is. But when people get burned out, it's always because there's something else in life that's giving them stress, personal relationships, finances, whatever it is. And it's creating a conflict here. It's, that's not what's causing the burnout. You can never burn yourself out. You just create more capacity. The more you do, the more you can do. So next time you're feeling burned out, look up from what you think it is and look around and see what's really bothering you and you'll find it's something else usually. All right, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much. I'm trying to grow this channel so I need as much as possible. I don't know if anybody does Reddit. I've been watching the Reddit stuff with uh, the GameStop. I don't know if anybody's seen that. I'm loving it, right? I gotta be honest. I'm, I'm one of these people who's like, finally, finally, someone's holding them accountable. But um, anyway, if, if you're a Redditor or you, you do the forums or whatever, uh, put, put these things out there. If you guys can help me do that, I would really appreciate it. I love, uh, appreciate every sub subscriber. Every time you guys share, post, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, you like me, you don't like me, all of it really helps to grow this channel and make this a global community. This is really us. This is our, we're in it together. This is our global dojo, global virtual dojo. And I hope to see a lot of you in person, like flesh to flesh, person to person, sometime in the near future. Might be a little bit longer than I expected. I thought I'd be in India last year doing a couple of seminars. I thought I'd be traveling around the States a lot more. And we were supposed to go to Ireland over the summer last year. And of course, like you, no one's really going anywhere. So at least we've got each other right here. So I really appreciate that. Send me some uh, links. Go to Pasquinelli.com. If you have any questions, reach me there. Send me some, go, do that contact box. I'll email you back. We can start an email chain. If you have any questions, I'd love to talk to you guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you in a little bit.